Can you uh, talk to the Toward Monosemanticity paper from uh, October last year? That had a lot of like nice breakthrough results. That's very kind of you to describe it that way. Um, yeah, I mean, this was um, uh, our first real success using sparse autoencoders. So we took a one-layer model, um, and it turns out if you go and you you know do dictionary learning on it, you find all these really nice interpretable features. So you know the Arabic feature, the Hebrew feature, uh, the base sixty-four feature. Those were were some some examples that we studied in a lot of depth and really showed that they were um, what we thought they were. It turns out if you train a model twice as well and train two different models and and do dictionary learning, you find find analogous features in both of them. So that's fun. Um, you find all kinds of of different features. So that was really just showing um, that. Um, that this works. And, um, you know, I should mention that there was this Cunningham et al. Um, that had very similar results around the same time. There's something fun about being doing these kinds of small scale experiments and finding that it's actually working. Yeah, well, and there's, and that there's so much structure here. Like you, you know, yeah. so maybe, maybe stepping back for a while, um, I thought that maybe all this mechanistic interpolate work, um, the end result was going to be that I would have an explanation for why it was sort of you know, very hard and not going to be tractable. Um, you know, we'd be like, well, there's this problem of superposition, and it turns out superposition is really hard, um, and we're kind of screwed. But that's not what happened. In fact, a very natural, simple technique just works. And so then that's actually a very good situation. You know, I think um, this is a sort of hard research problem, and it's got a lot of research risk, and, you know, it, it might still very well fail. But um, I think that some amount of, some very significant amount of research risk um, was sort of put behind us when that started to work. Can you describe what kind of features can be extracted in this way? Well, so it depends on the model that you're studying, right? So the the larger the model, the more sophisticated they're going to be, and we'll probably talk about, about follow-up work in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, but in these one-layer models, um, so some very common things, I think, were were languages both programming languages and natural languages, there were a lot of features that were um, specific words in specific contexts. So the, and I think really the way to think about this is that the is likely about to be followed by a noun. So it's really, you could think of this as the feature, but you could also think of this as predicting a specific noun feature. And there would be these features that would fire for the in um, the context of, of, say, a legal document or a mathematical document or something like this. Um, and so... Uh, you know, maybe in the context of math, you're like, you know, the, and then predict vector or matrix, you know, all of these mathematical words, whereas, you know, in other contexts, you would predict other things. That was, that was common. And basically, we need clever humans to assign labels to what we're seeing. Yes. So, you know, this, this is, the only thing this is doing is that sort of, um, unfolding things for you. So if everything was sort of folded over top of it, you know, serialization folded everything on top of itself, and you can't really see it, this is unfolding it. Mm -hmm. But now you still have a very complex thing to try to understand. Um, so then you have to do a bunch of work understanding what these are. Um, and some of them are really subtle. Like there's some really cool things, even in these, this one layer model about um, Unicode, where, you know, of course, some languages are in Unicode and the tokenizer won't necessarily have a dedicated token for every um, Unicode um, character. So instead, what you'll have is you'll have this, these patterns of alternating token or alternating tokens that each represent half of a Unicode character, nice. and then you have a different feature that you know goes and activates on the on the opposing ones to be like, okay, you know, um, I just finished a character, you know, go and predict the next prefix. Um, then, okay, I'm on the prefix, you know, predict a reasonable suffix, um, and you you have to alternate back and forth. So there's you know these these one layer models are are really interesting and. Um, uh, I mean, there's another thing, which is you might think, okay, there would just be one base64 feature. But it turns out there's actually a bunch of base64 features because you can have English text encoded in, in as base64, and that has a very different distribution of base64 tokens than than regular. And there's um, uh, there's there's some things about tokenization as well that it can exploit. And I don't know, there's all all kinds of uh, fun stuff. How difficult is the task of sort of assigning labels? To what's going on? Can this be automated by AI? Well, I think it depends on the feature, and it also depends on how much you trust your AI. So um, there's a lot of work doing um, automated interpretability. I think that's a really exciting direction, and we do a fair amount of automated interpretability and have have Claude go and label our features. Is there some fun moments where it's totally right or it's totally wrong? Yeah. Well, I think I think it's very common that it's like says something very general, which is like true in some sense, but not really picking up on the specific of what's going on. Um, so I think I think that's a pretty common situation. Um, you don't know that I have a particularly amusing one. That's interesting, that little gap between it is true, but it doesn't quite get to the deep nuance of a thing. Yeah. That's a general challenge. It's like, 
it's it's thoroughly an incredible accomplishment that it can say a true thing, but it doesn't. It's quite. It's not. It's missing the depth sometimes. And in this context, it's like the arc challenge. You know, the sort of IQ type of tests. It feels like figuring out what a feature represents is a bit of is a little puzzle you have to solve. Yeah, and and I think that sometimes they're easier and sometimes they're harder as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think I think that's tricky. Now, there's another thing which I don't know. Maybe. Maybe in some ways this is my like aesthetic coming in, but I'll, I'll give, try to give you a rationalization. You know, I'm actually a little suspicious of automated interoperability. Mm-hmm. And I think that's partly just that <laughs> yeah. I want humans to understand neural networks. And if the neural network is understanding it for me, you know, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't quite like that. But I do have a bit of a, a, you know, in some ways I'm sort of like the mathematicians who are like, you know, if there's a computer automated proof, it doesn't count. Right. Um, you know, you they won't understand it. But I, I do also think that there is... um this kind of like reflections on trusting trust type issue where, you know, if you, there's this, this famous talk about, um, uh, you know, you like when you're writing a computer program, you have to trust your compiler. And if there was like malware in your compiler, then it could go and inject malware into the next compiler and, you know, you'd be in kind of in trouble, right? Well, if you're using neural networks to go and um, verify that your neural networks are safe, the hypothesis that you're testing for is like, okay, well, the neural network maybe isn't safe. Um, and you have to worry about like, is there some way that it could be screwing with you? Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think that's not a big concern now. Um, but I do w- wonder in the long run if we have to use really powerful system, AI systems to go and, uh, you know, audit our AI systems. Is that is that actually something we can trust? But maybe I'm just rationalizing because I, I just want to, us to have to get to a point where humans understand everything. Yeah, I mean, especially, that's, that's hilarious, especially as we talk about AI safety and it looking for features that would be relevant to AI safety, like deception and so on. 